This may very well be the tallest stick of RAM in the entire world. And today, we're gonna put it to the test. Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer. And if you've been following my recent TikToks or YouTube shorts, then you'll know that every day we've been adding more and more risers to this stick of RAM until it breaks. If you haven't seen those, don't worry, let me catch you up real quick. Welcome back to adding a riser to this stick of RAM every single day until it stops working. Up to this point, we have increased this RAM's height by a factor of five, and today we'll make it six. As we install this absolute giant into our motherboard and power on the system, we see that we have reached the end of our journey. The system no longer boots. Now, don't be sad that it ended, be happy that it happened. So as a quick recap, what we found in those experiments was that this stick of RAM can still function with up to five adapters. And in this video, we are going to go a step further to test, benchmark, and compare how each additional adapter affects the performance of the RAM. Ultimately, these RAM risers serve a purpose of extending the functionality of a component. It's not very typical to see a RAM riser, where it is very typical to see something like a GPU riser. These types of risers are commonplace in small form factor PC building, mining rigs, and things like that. Basically, anytime you need a little bit more flexibility with the orientation or location that your GPU is actually plugged into. But with these RAM risers, you know, all it does is slightly increase the height. So to be completely honest, I'm not sure what the actual intended use case is of these. Sure, you can increase the height of the RAM, but generally, the taller the RAM is, the more clearance issues you'd have with, say, a large cooler. If I were to install this taller cooler instead, you can see that it is actually touching this RAM stick now that it's so tall. So it's kind of adding a problem that wasn't existing before. Now, my best hypothesis is that if you add enough risers all on top of each other, you can create this giant barricade that can protect the computer from any attacks from this side, which ridiculous, I know. But if you follow my channel, then you know that no component is safe from the occasional projectile being tossed at it. And uh, in this case, the wall works. So with that, let's get our baseline test out of the way where we test just the stick of RAM itself with no additional risers. For this evaluation, I'm going to be testing the speed of which the RAM stick can read and write. And while I'll be isolating the testing just to the RAM stick, the processor that we're working with, if we can do some excavating, is an Intel i5-10400F. And now I got the wrong face on my fingers. But don't worry, that's nothing a little detergent can't get off. And after a quick rinse, we are good as new. So again, we have the 10400F and this cheap H410 motherboard to go along with it. And the graphics card of choice for this testing is a 1050. This is a Vengeance LPX 16 gigabyte stick of RAM. It's clocked at 2666 megahertz and its timings are 16, 18, 18, 35. So with that, let's get our baseline by testing the read and write speeds of this stick of RAM without any adapter. To measure these metrics, I'm going to be using Passmark's performance testing software. And without any further ado, this graph that you're seeing represents how quickly this stick of RAM can read different sized chunks of memory. So our baseline read speed will be just under 8,000 megabytes per second. And if we perform a similar test on the write speed, we can see that our baseline for write speed is around 5,400 megabytes per second. So now let's install our first adapter and see how those speeds change. Logically, it seems like the more adapters we add, the slower the read and write speed will get but there's only one way to find out. All right, now with adapter number one, after running the same test, we can see that the average read speed varies slightly slower than our base case. And running the right test reveals, again, another step down in terms of speed. All right, let's keep this show moving by adding the second adapter. I feel like at this point with two risers, it's starting to look ridiculous. Basically, as soon as it overtakes the height of this fan, that's, that's the trigger for me. All right, jumping right into it, running the same test with two adapters reveals an even slower read speed. Check it out, the average read speed now is 7,749 megabytes per second. So, so far, the higher we rise, the slower the speed. And testing the write speed with two adapters reveals that there's an additional step down on the right side as well. Look at that, 5114. I'm sensing a downward trend here, but the show must go on. Who knows, maybe the uh, third riser will turn it all around. To find out, let's make this stack even taller, jump right back in the motherboard. And just like that, we can see adding a third riser decreases the average read speed even more. Now we're underneath 7700. And if we take a look at the write speed, oh, interesting, it actually went up from two adapters, but still well below our baseline. I'm itching to add more, so let's just jump into the fourth riser. Honestly, once it gets to this height, it's really uncomfortable pushing down straight from the top because it almost feels like it's just gonna snap in half. But we carry on. 
All right, we're up and running. And with four risers, the average read speed drops even further. We are now below 7,600 megabytes per second, even though we started at around 8,000. And now let's see how write speed is affected with four adapters. Honestly, the write speed isn't fluctuating as much as the read speed. Here we can see it's a little slower than with three adapters, but faster than two. That's actually pretty interesting. My, my gut would say that the read and write speeds would actually decrease at the same rate with the more adapters you add, but it doesn't seem to be the case, at least in this test. Moving right along, let's add our fifth and final adapter. And at this point, the RAM is almost as tall as a single fan graphics card, which is absolutely absurd. <laughs> All right, now that we have the five adapters installed, let's again run the same tests. With five adapters, our average read speed is now 7,460. So with the read speed, the downward trend continues. But the same can't be said for the write speed. As you can see, it's kind of stabilizing at 5,200 megabytes per second. Now, is this the most scientific test in the world? Probably not. I should probably add a lot more iterations to reduce the variance, but it is cool to see the surface level trends. I do feel obligated to test this sixth adapter one more time to see if we can somehow get it to work. And with it installed, our computer is turned on, but unfortunately what happens now is a whole lot of nothing. The computer just simply doesn't want to boot with six adapters on its RAM stick and actually tries to completely restart itself, but to no avail. So now that the rudimentary testing is completed, it is pretty interesting that as we added more risers, the read speed decreased pretty significantly, whereas the write speed stayed kind of constant. And before I forget, the last thing I want to test is actually teaming up this adapter filled RAM stick with a normal one to see how the computer handles that. So let's slot in our tall boy and our small boy. <laughs> I really just want to see if this boots and it, it looks like it is. So there you go. If you ever wanted one giant stick of RAM as well as one normal stick of RAM, then you can have them work in tandem. And the very last thing I want to test real quickly is what this monstrosity looks like actually installed inside of a case. I'm not fully convinced there'll be enough clearance at the edge of the case, but we'll find out. So with our stack of six risers, we're gonna need a case. Conveniently, I have this H510 from a previous video. If we take the time to secure a couple standoffs. You know, I think the clearance here might actually be pixel perfect. No way. Well, you know what? I'm okay admitting when I'm wrong. Having six risers on your RAM will still allow it to fit just barely inside of a case like this one. <laughs> doesn't make it any less absurd. Oh, as I was saying, doesn't make it any less ridiculous. Okay, the last, last, last thing I wanna test. Have you ever seen those chiropractor videos where they make cracking a back just sound so amazing? Well, I wonder if we can make the same thing happen with these RAM risers. Might take some coordination, but here we go. Don't try this at home. I'm a licensed RAM chiropractor. <laughs> All right, three, two. You got the idea. <laughs> So with that, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look into the tallest RAM stick in the world. And if nothing else, learned to keep your adapters at five on your RAM instead of six. But honestly, I still can't really think of why you would ever need even one. But if you guys can think of a legitimate use case for a RAM riser, let me know in the comments and I would love to read about it. Thank you for joining me on this tech tinkering adventure. As always, if you'd like to support the channel further, you can head over to MrYeaster.com to pick up some Mr. Yeaster merchandise, which includes t-shirts, sweatshirts, and water bottles. So as always, I am Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I will catch you in the next one. And until then, have a wonderful night.